All right. Describe the major outcomes of 26th session of conference of parties of UNFCCC. What are the commitments made by India in this conference? Sir. Yeah. Sir, can we write about the earthquake swarms which occurred in Maharashtra last year? Yeah, yeah. Of, but they, these were very small swarms generated mm -hmm. due to a particular reservoir which is called Koina Varna. Yeah. Yeah. So the the uh, these were not the earthquakes which which are ha they are not hazards. They are like they are a cause of concern, but they have never led to. They are not going to lead to any uh, uh, loss of life and property because of their very low intensity and also because they are not being created due to the fault mechanism. They are being created because uh, there is an area which is containing a lot of water because of which the crust is being sub like it is being suppressed. And so it is leading to a deformation in the local area, which is then resulting into the earthquake, which is very different from uh, an earthquake, which struck Bhuj or the earthquake, which struck Nepal in 2015. Uh -huh because of the faulting mechanism, because of the plate tectonics. Okay, sir. You're talking about the Koina Varna Dam uh, and the earthquakes in the surrounding areas, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So describe the major outcomes of the, so who will decode the question as to what is the main demand of the question? So, uh, yeah. so basically this question would require us to say what kind of, uh, uh, conclusions or what kind of uh, uh, yeah. so, conclusions they came with. Perfect. So let leave the leave the intro for some time. If we talk about the body part, as soon as your introduction ends, where would how would you start the body part? What would be the heading of your body part? Uh, so so major outcomes of major out of perfect. So major outcomes you will write about. And then uh, the com so, commitments made by India. Yeah, what uh, what India said they would do. So they yeah, commitments. commitments of India. So you can see that the question in this part, this year particularly, have been very straightforward. So it's not very difficult to decode them. Okay. So who can tell me the major outcomes of uh, Glasgow UNFCCC? One of the one of them is of course Green Grid Initiative, which we discussed in the first question. What that was a major outcome. So one but outcome was, was uh, a phase down of the coal. Perfect. So one was phase down of the coal, then another phase out of fossil fuel. And then. So targets was set to restrict methane. the global warming. But Abhishek, methane was not agreed by all the parties. So for example, India is not party to methane agreement. It is being pushed by developed countries, which are, which do not have. Yeah. Vinayak, go on. So, so uh, uh, target was set to restrict the global warming up to 1.5 degrees Celsius. So, so three. Vinayak, uh, let me interrupt you over here because I want you to write a very well structured, well, very well structured answer. Uh, so there is, let's, let me give you another example. And with that, I will try to communicate an idea of writing a structured answer. So, uh, let's uh, in GS paper two, there is a topic which says, uh, issues related to federal structure of India. So when it comes to federal, and let's say the question is enumerate the issues, which India's federation is facing very straightforward question. The question is issues, which Indian federation is facing. So facing basically it wants you to be aware about federal challenges, which Indian federalism. So you will write this as a heading. Now, Vinayak, what you are saying in your answers, although I appreciate that you are participating, but at the same time, I want you to write good answers. What I, so what are the issues which Indian federalism is facing? Can stands in just wait for a second. So what are the issues which Indian federation is facing? If you're watching our mm -hmm. DNS. Yeah. Uh, more authoritative center, more authoritative center. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's for a while, write point over here center. Then 
हाई सेंटर वट इज दिस हाई सेंटर वट इज लो सेंटर एनी अदर पॉइंट ऑर्डिनेंस फाइनेंशियल रिसोर्सिस शेयरिंग एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन शेयरिंग या शेयरिंग ऑफ लेट से जीएसटी कॉम्पेंसेशन से एनी अदर पॉइंट मिस यूज ऑफ द ऑफिस ऑफ गवर्नर मिस यूज ऑफ ऑफिस ऑफ गवर्नर Let's limit ourselves three points. Although there are a lot of other points as well. Let's say you are answering this question and you are writing points in this manner. Would this look better? Or first, a person who writes like this. legislative matters the first point is central enactment in state list and then writes for example farmers bill fine then second declining role of rajya sabha because rajya sabha is a council of states then that person underlines this legislative matter then moves on to executive matter and then talks about role of governor role of all india services then talks about imposition of president's rule then moves on to financial issues and writes about compensation says gst then writes about article 280 and lack of representation of the state government in the terms of references of finance commission the point which i am trying to make over here is that this answer has an executive matter then financial matter then executive matter then maybe legislative instead of that so similarly vinayak what the points which you are telling need to be so if since this is a 15 marker question it will have around 8 to 9 to 10 dimensions and so in that condition if you are able to segregate those various disparate points into subheadings it will it will give an idea of a very uh, sorted uh, uh, person as well as the answer Is this point correct? When I don't feel bad, the intention was uh, not to make you feel bad. Syllabic, uh, syllabic integration, sir. Yeah, syllabic integ. I did not understand what you want to say. Come again, sir. Fajan sir tells us about syllabic integration. Okay, okay. So he he say that uh, uh, write points according to the syllabus or the. Here yeah you can write mentioned. definitely syllabic acha you were talking about the syllabic i was not able to understand sorry so what he tells you is the right thing but for example in a question like federal federalism there is no syllabus to follow however you can follow this in uh, essay in ethics because these are those kinds of topics but here legislative executive and financial there is no particular order given in the syllabus in this particular case similarly in this case when you have to talk about major outcomes of conference of parties there is no syllabus to follow but if you know the outcomes very well which we will talk about you can definitely write all the answers okay so for example if you thank you so, sir thank you hai na so conference of parties of 20 uh, the glasgow conference was people had very high hopes uh, because the last conference at madrid was in 2019 which did not result in any concrete outcomes but then next year due to covid there was no conference and so since it was happening after a period of 2 uh, years there were high anticipation the anticipations was high were high because of very valid reasons uh, you know paris climate deal was finalized in 2015 and it was expected to come into force in 2020 most of the countries have promised their indcs which is nationally determined contributions when you read the paris climate deal there are various mechanisms to counter climate change so one of them is known as mitigation what is mitigation it is gradually reducing the amount of greenhouse gases being emitted into the atmosphere then paris climate deal also talks about adaptation what is it 
realizing the fact very well that significant climate change and global warming has already taken place there is nothing we can do about it and so we need to change our mechanisms our lifestyles our production methods in such a way so that they are not challenged or troubled by because of climate change so for example when you face increasing drought due to global warming you resort to drought prone varieties of crops that is called adaptation so these are the two ways through which we basically want to counter mitigation and adaptation both of which are contingent on finances why are they contingent on finances because we have adopted a system of common but differentiated responsibility and respective capabilities since most of the climate change and global warming are occurring because of the historical emissions from the developed countries so it is their responsibility majorly so cbdr says common but differentiated so everyone has to do something but they do not have to contribute equally some people will contribute more than the others so that is called common but differentiated responsibility fine whenever whatever data you remember with respect to mit, uh, with respect to paris climate deal all of that deals with mitigation for example when we say that paris climate deal the country under the paris climate deal countries have committed themselves to keep the temperature rise below 2 degree celsius and take efforts for less than 1.5 degree global warming that is not adaptation that is mitigation so this is a basic flaw in paris climate deal that since beginning it has focused more on mitigation and less on adaptation so the only numerical target which you recall belongs to mitigation and there is no such numerical target given to adaptation when it comes to mitigation there are other problems also for example uh so the first article 6 of the paris climate deal talks about market and non market mechanisms of carbon credit trading and that is a discussion in itself if you guys have access to qip classes you go and watch my uh, third gsi qip current affairs class where for one hour i have discussed carbon market and how carbon what are the problems with the carbon market so basically carbon market is that one country has some carbon credit and they want to trade it with other country because that country is not able to meet the target so they will have to buy those carbon credits from other countries which have excess so for example india is taking more efforts than it should take in order to counter climate change and so it india has let me explain it to you very quickly so for example uh, let's say this country a had committed under paris climate deal that by 2020 they are going to reduce the carbon emission by this much so this is a reduction so let's say this is what this is what they committed said so that right now they are at this level they are going to reduce it by this much this was their commitment of a country a on the other hand there was a country b which had committed that they will not be able to pace make pace with a but they are going to reduce by this much four years down the line when 2020 actually came a was able to reduce much more than needed so they had promised only this much reduction but they were actually able to achieve this much reduction so the extra reduction from the commitment becomes your carbon credit and this country promised very less but in fact increased its emissions because they did not take proper actions to counter climate change and so now what they have to show at the end of 2020 under paris climate deal is this much reduction so they have to they have to do an accounting exercise for this much so this country is approached they say that please give me give us this extra carbon credit this carbon credit which you have earned and in return we will pay you and this is very beneficial because the country which is taking extra doing extra will be financially paid for the actions which they are taking so more and more countries would be encouraged to take to do more and more more than what they had promised this is called carbon market so this is called carbon credits but how is it going to be exchanged there is no rule about that since because there is no market which which exists right now 
So for example, if you have share market, there is a SEBI to regulate it. Similarly, this is going to be a new market, which will be created at a global level. So you need a global entity to regulate this market like WTO and IMF, like UN. So the article six of the Paris climate deal talked about the market mechanisms and how it is going to be regulated, which said that the countries would sit down and decide the rules. Now, since five years, the countries have not been able to agree on a common set of rules. And there are a lot of problems with that as well. So for example, under Kyoto protocol, similar mechanism existed and in the countries like India and China took a lot of initiatives to earn a lot of carbon credits because anticipating that these developed countries would buy and we will get, we'll get a lot of foreign exchange in return. But these developed countries are developed because of a reason. They're so shrewd. They are so clever when it came to actually buying these credits, they discarded the Kyoto protocol. And then they started focusing on Paris climate deal in 2015. Now this rules are, have not been agreed so far is because the developing countries like India and China insist that first you talk about the carbon credits, which we have accumulated since 1994. What about those carbon credits? Who is going to purchase them? And these countries, developed countries say that why are you talking about Kyoto? Kyoto is long gone. Talk about Paris. And these developing countries say that unless and until you do something about those carbon credits, we will not move ahead. That is problem number one. The problem number two is about mechanisms of accounting. So for example, when I said that country A promised this much, that they are going to reduce this much, but they ended up reducing more than what they committed, who is going to actually verify this reduction. What is the way to verify the reduction in the emissions? And it's precisely at this particular point, developed countries have no trust on the rules being followed at the ground level in developing countries like India. They insist that when India says that we are, we have been able to achieve reduction of two gigatons of carbon dioxide on what basis are you saying? Have you installed uh, machines on each and every industry? That is problem number two, then problem. Number, so there are a lot of problems. Then there is a problem of keeping the most polluting industries outside the commitment level. So whatever I'm saying is making sense or not. It is right. You're able to understand the concept. So problem number three is about keeping the most polluting industries out of the nationally determined contributions. Um, what does this say? So you should understand that reduction is easiest in most polluting industries. Is, so for example, if you want to re reduce the emission, the first thing which you should look for is coal power plants because they're extremely dirty. They emit a lot of polluting gases. But when you look at India's commitment to nationally determined contribution, do you find any place for talking about coal? generation and coal power plants, you do not find you. What you see is 175 gigawatt of renewable energy in enhancement of energy efficiency by 33%. You do not see India talking about coal. Why you don't see coal in India's commitment? Because you earn carbon credits only on those on which you have committed. If India is keeping coal outside the commitment, whatever reduction India is making there automatically becomes India's carbon credit. It's a very crucial point. Try to understand it. So for example, if India says that by in by 2025, we will reduce our dependence on coal by half. So first India will have to reduce the dependence on coal by half and then if it is going further than half, then it becomes a carbon credit. But currently, since India has not committed anything under coal, even two giga tons less of coal accounts as a carbon credit. Is this point clear or do you have any doubts? Vinayak, Shweta, Divyam, Samaj Maya. So that is how what we have observed 
that most of the countries have kept most polluting industries outside the purview of nationally determined contributions because they know that earning carbon credits is very easy over there so let's not commit anything in those domains so these are the problems which need needed to be sorted out and so at glasgow only one thing related to mitigation was sorted out majorly was the migration of old credits to show first commitment so you know that under paris climate deal the first commitment was made in 2016 and the clause was that progressively the next commitment should be stronger than this and this was because we have learned a strong lesson in kyoto where you, the global community felt that whenever you impose something from outside countries do not abide, abide by that so let's give a countries a chance to come up with their own nationally determined contributions but put a clause over there that whatever whatever you are committing in 2016 the next commitment in 5 years should be much more stronger than this so countries thought that in this way ultimately we will reach to our goal so only the and we know that we have understood that the countries were demanding the migration of kyoto to the paris climate deal so developed countries said they agreed that migration we will allow the migration we will agree to the migration only as long as it is being used to show the commitment of the first achievement first commitment you cannot use it to show your second commitment which will be applicable in 2026 so if you are if a country is submitting its data for 2021 they can purchase it from country like india and they can show it but that is the last time so india will not be able to use its carbon credits next from next year onwards so they have to get rid of all the carbon credits otherwise no one is going to purchase them when it comes to adaptation you do not have a quantitative targets like you have in case of mitigation so for the first time the countries decided that now it's time to quantify the adaptation goals as well for which they have formulated a committee which will meet and next year they will come up with the commitments similarly in finance we have we know that in 2009 countries agreed at cancun that they are going to uh, finance 100 billion dollar per annum per annum 100 billion dollar they committed but if you look at the global contribution it is not 100 billion dollar in total and what they committed was 100 billion dollar per annum so these were the various aspects there were other dimensions as well so this was covered in mains revision classes let me quickly talk about others as well so you see mitigation adaptation So Glasgow's major outcomes under mitigation. So countries agreed that they will, they are going to strengthen their NDCs further. They are going to meet annually in meetings and report the data. As when I talked about coal phase down and fossil fuel phase out, right? So this is the way to categorize your answer under mitigation. These were the commitments under adaptation. Double allocation, two-year work program to decide the target. under financing these under carbon market transition allowed for first commitment period is this visible to everyone so now i think if you look at this slide instead of this mind map you this would just become this will become a heading sub heading and these would become the lines within your answer so major outcomes of the 20 is a mitigation all parties agreed that stronger action is present as a result it decided to phase down coal strengthening adaptation finance so if examiner looks at your answer instead of random points it will see the person is going to uh, see a very well structured well presented answer uh, divided into categories which are actually the foundations of unfccc okay and then the next part is of course india's commitment at cop 26 okay so this was so whenever something is covered in qip classes of course you know that it would be covered in compass as well because the qip classes are basically compass classes 